Hello and welcome to Eden Technologies continuing video series on enterprise data security and data loss prevention. Today's video is about the semantic storage DLP. After a brief introduction, I will describe the storage DLP technology to you, then we'll demonstrate it, and then we'll wrap up. Hi, I'm Andy Sherman. I'm the security practice lead at Eden Technologies. As part of my IT career, I have spent over 15 years in IT and information security, mostly in financial ser services. I have a strong specialization in data security and, and data governance, and have been involved with data loss prevention since the infancy of the industry. This is the fifth in our video series. As I said before, we'll be covering a semantic storage DLP. Now let's look at the technology. Storage DLP is all about finding confidential data at rest in the various repositories in our systems. Network Discover, which is the main product we'll be looking at, finds, finds confidential data in server-based systems such as file systems, Exchange servers, Lotus Note servers, SharePoint servers, and Microsoft SQL servers. If you need to customize a scanner for some other technology, you can do that and then use web services on the DLP server to send incidents back. Network Protect is an add-on to Network Discover. It allows us to act on the files that Discover finds, either by making a copy of them for further inspection or by quarantining them, which is a copy where we, we delete the file from its original location, possibly leaving behind a ransom note. Endpoint Discover uses the endpoint server that we demonstrated the last time with Endpoint Prevent to scan the file system on endpoints. The endpoint server can manage multiple parallel scans on a lot of endpoints at once. Network Protect is not available for endpoints, but you can write custom flex response rules to take action on files that are found. Our demonstration use cases, we'll be using Network Discover and Network Protect on a file server, and we'll be using Endpoint Discover. Because Discover scans take a while, we've actually already run the scan, and we'll show you the incidents that we found. The cases that we'll be using involve gram leach Bliley enforcement by finding U.S. Social Security numbers and credit card numbers, and company confidential data as marked in documents. We have scenarios both for detection only and for using Network Protect to quarantine files. Our demonstration setup involves a set of DLP servers on virtual machines. The DLP Enforce server uh, manages policies and receives incidents from our two detection servers, the Discover server, which is what uses SIFs to, to walk the file system on file servers, and the DLP Endpoint server, which manages scans by the endpoint agents. All of these receive their policies from the Enforce server and they send their incidents back there. The Enforce server provides a central console to allow us to manage policies and to do incident response. Our test cases, we have files of phony customer data that includes fields in, in scope for, for Gram leach Bliley, like social security numbers and credit card numbers. And we have files of different sizes to demonstrate action based on severity. We also have files with confidential markings for our demo company. We have a three-tier classification scheme, internal use only, confidential and restricted, in increasing orders of severity. And now let's go to the demonstration. For a demonstration today, we will be looking at two policies. As with the other demonstrations, Graham Leach Bliley, which covers the privacy of financial data and, Del and confidential data relating to Delahu Company, our demo company. So, as before, Graham Leach Bliley looks for credit card numbers and social security numbers. And we've added a response rule for the storage, storage demonstration called Quarantine File. And this is a network protect action. When the severity is high, we will copy the file to a quarantine location and leave, back and, uh, leave behind a note saying that the file was quarantined and where it is. 
And similarly for Delahue Confidential, we have done the same thing. So for high severity incident, which is a restricted file, we will quarantine the file and leave behind a ransom note. As I said before, we've already run an endpoint scan. Let me show you the, the scans that we've defined. So we've defined two, two scans. One's called data share, and that goes against the file share on one of our servers, and endpoints. Endpoint is a scan that, that puts all of these policies, and we've done a filter to just look at Microsoft Office documents um, and text files and PDF files. And we've run that scan already. So if we go to the discover incidents, we will see what that scan found. So you can see this new symbol here, the picture of a screen, indicates that it was an endpoint discover incident. And if we go here, we see we found in my home directory on the demonstration workstation, a copy of the restricted test file, the internal test file, and the confidential test file, as well as all the client data test files. And we also found because there was an undeleted piece of email in, in my out, Outlook file, um, we see that there was an attachment in that file containing one of the, 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 customer, the customer files. And so with these incidents, the incident response people can contact the user to determine if it's appropriate or not, or contact the user's manager for these files to be on the user's workstation. Now, let's go and scan the server. So we select data share and we select start scan. And the server is going to come back and say that it's starting. And we, by the time we refresh, the scan status is ready, which means that it's done. So let's go back to the incident list for discover incidents. And we see we have some new incidents and some new symbols. So the symbol on the left here is sort of the universal symbol for, net, for an, a network share. And then this other symbol here, which looks like a little safe, that's an indication that that incident resulted in a quarantine. So if we go to the incident, we see the confidential document this was detected. It gives us information about where the file is, um, what the permissions are on it, and then contact information for the file owner and the file owner's manager. We go to the next incident. We see that this was restricted. It was a high severity incident. And so protect quarantine the file. And that's what this little safe symbol means. And it also tells me where on the server, um, where on the server it put the, the quarantine file. It creates it creates a file in the quarantine for this particular scan definition and the date and time that the scan was done. And similarly, if we look at the other incidents, we can see that, that, that the same thing was done for the big customer file, which is a high severity incident. It was also quarantined. Now, to get some idea of, of what the user sees, let's go to, to the data share. We'll go to the customer file. And we see that there is a file there for customer processing West. And if, but if we try and open it, Excel says 
This isn't really an Excel file. So let's take a guess that's probably a text file and open it with Notepad. And sure enough, it says, your file customers for processing West.xls has been quarantined to this quarantine location because it contained a high severity violation of the policy Graham Leach Bliley. While the other smaller file, which was detected, is still there in place. Similarly, if we go to the internal document file, here we can see that this has been saved as a, as a text document. Um, and if we click it open, it tells us, it gives us the ransom note telling us where and why it's been quarantined. And to get the file out of the quarantine, obviously we would have to contact an administrator to restore it and probably do some remediation on the permissions on that directory so that this didn't keep happening. Today we gave you an overview and demonstration of Semantic Storage DLP technology. This is the fifth in our series. We have reviewed the entire product set as well as an overview of what data security and data loss prevention means and the people and processes involved in making a successful DLP program. For more information, visit our website, www.edentechnologies.com. And in particular, you can visit the middle URL to, to find out about our data loss prevention practice. Questions, email connect at edentechnologies.com. And if you have security questions or comments on this video series, feel free to email me directly at asherman at edentechnologies.com. On behalf of Eden Technologies, I'd like to thank you for your attention to this video and the entire series.